SpaceX just took another major step in finally letting you book that space vacation. Welcome to CNBC After Hours, I'm Pippa Stevens. Let's start off with the markets. The Nasdaq is the only index to finish in the green, but the Dow recovered from as much as a 274-point sell-off at one point today. The drop happened despite another round of positive economic news. Essentially, in August, consumers bought goods at a way faster pace than economists were expecting. And on the crypto front, it doesn't look much better. By 4 p.m. Eastern, Ethereum was up a percent, while Bitcoin was down a percent. And ADA, the digital token that runs on the Cardano blockchain, lost about 4.5%. Also, here are some other numbers that moved markets today. First up is 62 million. Kathy Wood is getting out of Tesla. Well, kind of. Funds managed by ARK Invest sold around $62 million worth of Tesla shares yesterday, then replaced them with Robinhood stock. In all, Wood has reportedly sold $260 million in Tesla stock this month, although she says she is still a Tesla bull. The ARK Innovation Fund is looking to stage a comeback after falling more than 4.5% so far for 2021. Next up is 45. Casino stocks are feeling the pain this week as the so-called gambling capital of the world might be cracking down on the industry. Macau has opened a 45-day review of gaming in the region and investors aren't sticking around to see what happens. Wynn Resort stock fell 19% in the past week and Las Vegas Sands is down 14%. And finally, 19. Summer is coming to an end, sadly, but Weber isn't worried about grill sales slowing down. The company released its first earnings report as a publicly traded company and sales jumped 19% in the last year. On top of that, demand for its new collapsible grill appears strong. The stock rallied 4% today on the positive news. Sure, summer is grilling season, but this year it was basically space travel season as well. We saw major launches from Virgin Galactic and Blue Origin that kicked the billionaire space race into high gear. Now, SpaceX just launched another crewed mission into orbit, and the entire crew is made up of civilians, including a scientist, doctor, and engineer. CNBC.com space reporter Michael Sheets is down in Florida, and he can explain how this flight puts SpaceX ahead of the competition in commercial spaceflight. I'm here at Port Canaveral in Florida, just a few miles away from Kennedy Space Center, where last night SpaceX launched the Inspiration4 mission, uh, a group of four passengers flying into orbit for a few days and with the goal of raising up to $200 million for St. Jude Research Hospital. It is very remarkable in the milestones it represents. I mean, you, first and foremost, the fact that it's a non-professional crew going to orbit for multiple days, that's a huge milestone. Secondarily, uh, it's actually Dr. Cyan Proctor, who's the pilot of the mission, represents the first black woman to ever pilot a spacecraft. Uh, Haley Arsenault is now the youngest American to have ever flown in space. She's also the, the first person to ever fly to space with a prosthetic. And this is the highest altitude that anyone's flown in in years because they're traveling actually higher than the International Space Station. Like the name kind of suggests, it's an inspirational mission. It's an idea and a representation of this new age in commercial and private space flight. And I would say that SpaceX is multiple years ahead of both Jeff Bezos' Blue Origin and uh, Richard Branson's Virgin Galactic. I mean, Blue Origin's uh, orbital capable rocket is not going to launch for at least a year or more. And SpaceX has been launching orbital capable rockets for many years at this point. I mean, they've launched over 100 successful Falcon 9 rockets and they're just continuing that pace. SpaceX uh, with the Crew Dragon capsule has been competing directly with Boeing with their Starliner capsule for NASA contracts. That Boeing uh, spacecraft was actually just delayed uh, through the rest of this year for an uncrewed test flight, and they're not going to really be able to get a crew on board that, at least until next year. All right, before we go, here is one last thing to know. The discussion around COVID booster shots is heating up. A new survey from CNBC and Dynata found between 4 and 16% of Americans have already gotten a third shot, but the FDA hasn't actually approved them. The agency is meeting tomorrow to make a decision on Pfizer's booster, although FDA advisors said there wasn't enough evidence a third COVID shot was warranted just yet. You can read about the push for booster shots along with everything else we talked about today on the show by going to CNBC.com or downloading the CNBC app. That's all for today's edition of After Hours. We are here every Tuesday and Thursday, so we'll see you then.